When I was younger, I used to think, what kind of legacy do I want to leave behind? A legacy is something that we leave the next generation. And it can be possessions. It can be, um, you know, it could be something like um, our principles that we want to pass on. And, but for me, when I think about it, I wanted to have an eternal perspective in my legacy. I wanted to leave something to the next generation that would go on forever. I wanted my influence in, this gener in the next generation to have to see Jesus better, to know him better, and to, and to go to him and to cling to him. So that's what I really wanted for my legacy. And throughout the years, every time I think about it, I still want the same thing. I want to leave behind um, where people can say, she knew Jesus, she loved Jesus, she trusted him, and she rested in him. And that's what I want others to learn from me. And that's what I want to leave behind. And so um, I've thought, like I said, I've thought about this a lot. And I know that, you know, the Bible says we might have 70 years, maybe 80 if we're lucky, but we don't know. We don't know if we'll have tomorrow. We don't know when our last moment on this earth will be. We have no idea. Only God knows every hour of our life. So whether you're young or you're old, it's never too soon or too late to think about what kind of legacy you wanna leave and think about how you're living and think about how you're influencing other people. I, When I was, well, throughout my life, I've gone to so many memorial services and I can tell you that most of them, I forget. You know, I, I like them at the time because I learned something about the people that I'm there for, but most of them don't stick with me. Most of them don't have this heavy legacy or have any kind of legacy that I can see that sticks with me. But I wanna share two of them with you that I went to. They were both men. The first man, I, in fact, I knew both of them very well. But the first man, when I went to his memorial, one thing I did not know about him was that he was extremely evangelistic. And that was what his heart was set on. His heart was set on sharing Jesus with others. And you know what? I still remember. I remember so much about that service because it was such a great influence for me. This other man, he was an older man. And um, sometimes, well, most of the time, he was very grumpy. And that's the only way I knew him. I met him when he was old and he was always grumpy. He always kind of scared me a little bit because he was so grumpy. But then I went to his memorial service and I learned that he had started a Christian ministry that is still going on today. He was like the founder of it. And it kind of blew me away because I thought, okay, this man isn't wasn't just a grump his whole life. Something happened to him later that turned him into a grump, which made me realize that our legacy spans our whole life. And that that means I need to continually be thinking about what kind of legacy I'm le leaving today. And, you know, I don't know how many people will remember what I did when I was young. They're going to remember who I was when I, when I leave this earth. And so it's really important that I have um, an attitude and a way with people that shows that I love Jesus and that's what I'm living for. So um, I wanted to say that every single one of us will leave a legacy. We will. It's either going to be good or it's going to be bad. And it's, but we will leave one. People will remember us and they'll remember us for different reasons. And we want to really be careful what they remember us for. Proverbs 13, 22 says, good people have an inheritance to their grandchildren. So this is talking about not only can we leave it to the next generation, but the generation after that. So we can really be an influence in two generations by the way we live today, by the way we talk, by the way we spend our money, by the things that we do. We can leave an inheritance for the next two generations. Even in my family, it's probably more like three because my great grandparents died when I was 21. So for me, I have to think about maybe I'm leaving it for three generations. I don't know. I don't know what you have to think about. But if we want to think about that, we need to ask ourselves some questions. How do I want to be remembered? After I'm gone, will I continue to influence others for good? 
will I leave an influence of God? To leave a legacy that I want, what do I need to be doing right now? And what things should I stop doing? What, what areas do I need to clean up my life so that I leave a better legacy? I know that some of you have thought about this as well, and some of you have, have actually tried to live this way as well. But some of you, this may be a new thought. This may be something that you haven't really given much thought to. If that's the case for you, I want you to ask yourself, what do I need to do today to change so that I leave a good legacy? What things do I need to practice so that others can find Jesus? I really want to encourage you in that way because I really think that is the best thing that we can leave for the next generation. We can leave them our faith. And I want to read a quote from Billy Graham because I've always admired him and I, he really left a great legacy. He says, the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is not money or other material things accumulated in one's life, but rather a legacy of character and faith. And that's my challenge to you today. Think about, are you leaving a legacy of character and faith?